All right, let's uh, get this show on the road. So I was going to do a lot more videos this month than I ended up doing. Uh, so I was going to watch a bunch of movies, do movie reviews, didn't do that. Comics, comics reviews, uh, current events and politics stuff, didn't do that. But I did see all of Umbrella Academy, so I'm going to review it real quick. Because I'd like to talk about this. I thought it was a very interesting show. It's... I have to wonder if, because of the Disney evacuation of their content from Netflix and other media, everything's going to be on Disney+. Plus. And considering how popular superhero comics and uh, genre stuff is right now, I have to wonder if Netflix isn't taking a deliberate view of kind of this strategy of finding uh, comic book stuff, not mainstream stuff, because they're not going to get it. Warner Brothers is going to defend their stuff to the death. They are not going to give it them. Netflix, that is. <clears throat> Any of their stuff to make a movie or a live-action TV show, too. That seems very unlikely. Uh, likewise, Marvel, no way. That is now their enemy. Uh, Netflix and Disney Plus are now at war, which is to say Disney is at war with Netflix. That's amazing. This is such a weird time to be alive. Anyway, I think they found Umbrella Academy. I can't I have trouble with that name. It's a little awkward for me. Apparently it's made by the lead, the original comic book, of which the show is very, very loosely based on. It's not a true word-for-word, scene-for-scene, story-for-story recreation of it by any means. Or so I'm told. I haven't read the comic book yet. The comic book is actually written by the lead singer of, uh, uh, what is their face? My Chemical Romance, I think. And it's it's a weird ass comic. It's actually it's actually my kind of weird. I how to put this. I like really weird stuff, like really weird stuff. I, I wouldn't quite put this on the level of Legion, which was weird and surreal and sometimes not even explaining why. <clears throat> this is a, a bit more grounded. God damn it, that's the word I've been looking for too. I've been trying to explain how these, these uh, genre shows are... Realistic isn't the word, particularly not for this one. Um, gritty isn't quite right either. Certainly there are dirtier elements to it. We see person, their personal lives. We see things you wouldn't see in a comic book. But at the same time, it still has a nice shiny gloss over a lot of things. What is, how do you describe this? Grounded, that's the word. Where things aren't realistic necessarily, but they do seem to have realistic and logical consequences or more grounded anyway. Anyway, I want to say I love this show. I absolutely do. Uh, if you've seen it already, you know what I mean. It's, I don't want to give anything away, anything at all, but man, the show is just interesting. And we're well, going through this. From a technical standpoint, the acting's fantastic. Ellen Page is not quite the lead character, but certainly one of the most prominent of the lead characters. Uh, she plays Vanya. And she does a great job. Actually, everyone's acting is is pretty darn good. Is excellent to good, acting-wise. Uh, effects, there are a couple action set pieces. They're, they're pretty good. Uh, some of them are exciting. For something made by the lead singer of My Chemical Romance, music seems to have it seems to be a recurring theme and uh, actual story element in some places. So it adds a lot to it. In other words, there's random pop music in it. Think Guardians of the Galaxy, but more so. <clears throat> it makes what would be okay scenes a little more interesting and funny. It's a very good... It's a very good series. I did totally marathon this in like three days. It's one of those series where you could, where you're up, I was up at one in the morning on a night I should not have been watching the last episode of this. Watching the last episode. 
And it did have quite a few moments. I've noticed Netflix series seem to have this where two or three episodes before the last one, it kind of feels like everything's about to wrap up. And then somehow it, it keeps going for another episode, and you're like, well, it can't go any further. And then there's a whole other episode after that. So, all things considered, I would strongly recommend watching the show. Uh, it's it's funny, it's interesting. All the characters have completed arcs. Like all the characters, all the characters thinking about it. They did a very good job of fleshing out everyone. I've heard in the past that Netflix, one of the conflicts Netflix has with some of their writers and uh, writing teams and producers and stuff is that with negotiations and stuff, some of the uh, show creators don't want to make you know, 10 or more episodes, and Netflix position is, no, we want at least 10, ideally 13, 16, however many you can do. And I think that was to the detriment of Iron Fist, that show, because it felt like way too little content stretched out too long. This show, I think, could have suffered the same, Umbrella Society, but, Academies, pardon me, but instead of just stretching or padding, it actually took the time to, to its filler, quote-unquote, is character development. Like, what are, what is this random character thinking? What's going on with them? And that's an interesting story in its own right. A lot of the, the minor background characters have stuff going on with them, and they're all fleshed out. So the fact they had a lot of space to fill, they used a very good effect in this series it makes it interesting to watch and it gives it that sort of I've got to watch one more episode sort of sort of feel to it like it gives it momentum that's the that's the exactly the term, term I'm looking for it's grounded and has momentum there we go uh, how do I review this shit um, what are the odds you're gonna see this thing and not like it I think low uh, particularly for a Netflix series how do you even get all the way through if you didn't like it I mean if you're not crazy about it, you'll just stop at the first or second episode. If you got all the way to the end, almost certainly you liked it. And like I said, all the characters, it has it has good, it keeps up a decent velocity. Like stuff's constantly moving, we're introduced to stuff, and there's enough mysteries that there's stuff to uncover. While, meanwhile, events are unfolding. Never mind time travel is a thing with this, so we've got stuff in the future and the past and all sorts of, so we're flashing back to stuff that happened 50 years in the future, and so on. So odds you'll see it and not like it very low. Uh, God, like 1 in 10? Like, how do you even get through this thing? Like I said, if you don't like it. Um, that's a weird anomaly of a Netflix show versus a movie. Uh, what else? Would I see this again? For 10 episodes? Yeah, particularly with a, a show with a lot of surprises like this. And where you're kind of given clues to stuff that's going to happen and then there's a payoff and then events unfold and then there's time travel involved and then there's, there's yeah I mean I'd watch this again uh, probably with someone who hasn't seen it before but yeah I'd, I'd totally watch this again uh, I think that's all I have to babble on about this I'm hoping to do more stuff and for some reason my voice has been disappearing and I that's not good because I work on the phone so we'll see how this goes. Anyway, that's that's it for me. I don't have anything else to say. Not at all.